Hi, everybody. This is Cynthia Kane. Welcome back to UL100CB and our video tutorial for our engagement activities and learning assessments for this week of copyright and ethical use of information. So I am at our screen right now where we're ready to look at something else before we start getting into those particular activities. So at this point, now that you've finished uh, various modules, including last week's module of visual literacy and citation, if you wish, you could go ahead and take quiz number two. Quiz number two will be open until the end of our course, Friday, December 6th, but you could go ahead and take that now if you like or at any time before December 6th. It's worth a maximum of 14 points. There are three attempts on this quiz. You would see one question at a time. Now remember with this quiz, as with quiz number one, you can use your textbook because a lot of the questions will come from the chapters on our textbook that talk about our different modules, plus any other material that happens to be on the course side. So this is totally open book. You can take it up to three times. Your highest score from those three attempts will count. So if you're looking to earn some additional points for engagement activities, quiz number two would be a perfect opportunity to do that. And before we go any further, I am going to scroll back up just as a quick reminder that if you've not already done this, you can also go ahead and complete quiz one. The same thing, this would be worth a maximum of 10 points with three attempts, and then uh, your highest score would count out of those three attempts. So if you wanted to go ahead and do quiz number one, and then quiz number two at this point, you'd be ready to do that to earn some additional points for your engagement activities. Now we'll go ahead and look at our engagement activities and our learning assessments for this week of copyright and ethical use of information. So you may recall that in the video tutorial for copyright and ethical use of information, I was encouraging you to go ahead and look at these two links for the songs of similarities and comparisons between the Carter family Will You Miss Me When I'm Gone and Anna Kendrick Cups? And also think about the similarities between the Chiffon song, He's So Fine, and George Harrison, My Sweet Lord. I also encouraged you in that tutorial to go ahead and look at this link for the same video clip from one of the episodes of Beverly Hills 90210. The first clip features the original music that played under this clip when this, uh, when this episode was first aired, and that was R.E.M.'s Losing My Religion. And the second clip features the generic replacement music for the same clip. And I did encourage you to watch these two clips and listen to some of the differences between using the original music in the first one and the generic music in the second one and how that might affect the way that you are perceiving the scene, the way you're perceiving the characters, and so forth. Again, all in terms of copyright. The reason we wanted you to go ahead and look at all of these videos is that this is going to prepare you for our first engagement activity for this week, which would be a copyright discussion. So let's take a look at this. This particular discussion thread will be due on November 17th at 11.59 p.m., again with that two-day grace period of November 19th at 11.59 p.m. This is worth a maximum of five points for your engagement activity. And this goes back to one of the discussions that we had in our video tutorial, that many films and TV shows use music deliberately to evoke an emotional response from the audience. So think about all the clips that you've been watching. And what we want you to do in this discussion is respond in your own opinion five to six sentences. Don't write just one sentence because that's not going to be enough to get the entire points. But what we want you to do is answer this question. Should the original music for a film or a television show be the primary focus of a commercial release on DVD or streaming video? Or is it more important to release the film or TV series without the original music? to get it to the audience as soon as possible. Keep in mind there are no right or wrong answers to this. We're just interested in your opinions and in your thoughtful responses to whichever area or whichever thought that you're coming down on. 
So again, there are no right or wrong answers. Just think about your perspective and think about your point of view. And please write a minimum of five to six sentences with this discussion response. The second engagement activity that you can do for a maximum of five points relates to another TED Talk called Your Social Media Likes Expose More Than You Think. And this very much relates to um, ethical use of information in terms of the fact that we don't necessarily have as much privacy on our social media as we might think. Now, you may choose to watch the TED Talk here, or if you click on this link, you'll be able to read the transcript along with watching the video, whatever is most comfortable for you. So once you're done with that, you're going to write another discussion response as a reflection, include your reactions, thoughts, your ideas, and or questions about the talk, how this talk relates to information literacy from your perspective, and how the topic of the TED Talk could relate to your personal experience and or to society. Again, with the first engagement activity, please write more than just one or two sentences. Don't write just, it really made me think, or they were a good speaker. Think more in terms of how you are replying to these questions and write a pretty substantial paragraph with a lot of thought in it. And the reason that we're doing this is that we want you to practice thinking about information in a way that is similar to what you're already doing when you're evaluating sources to choose for your research topic for your web portfolio. So those are our two engagement activities for this week. And you also have two learning assessments. The first learning assessment for media literacy would be due by 11.59 p.m. November 15th, again with that grace period. In this case, you would have a grace period of 11.59 p.m. November 17th. So for this one, you could choose a print ad or a TV ad or a meme or a minute or two of a TV show or film. And we want you to focus on how communication takes place within that particular clip or within that advertisement. Think about images, think about ideas. Is there a feeling that's evoked uh, in the advertisement or in the meme? And distinguish between what is literally seen or heard and the connotations. So for example, if you were looking at an ad for a car, a car is literally a means of transportation, but depending upon the type of car, it might actually be uh, conveying the message, again, in images, that if you own a certain type or if you own a certain brand of car, car somehow you are of higher social status. Maybe it makes you look better in the eyes of other people. So think about what is literally seen or heard, and then the connotations, what is implied. And then what we want you to do is provide an introduction, a description of your media item, what did you decide that you were going to write about, evidence supporting what you think your item communicates, and a short discussion of why it is important, to whom it is important, and how your analysis will provide new insight or reveal assumptions or unintended meanings represented by the selected media. Now, you could write a one to two page double spaced paper. If you're feeling very creative, you could create a poster or a web page or a video. Please add the citation for the item of media that you are analyzing. And we'd like for you to use APA style in this particular uh, time. If you have any questions about how to cite your item in APA style, don't hesitate to uh, consult us, and we'd be happy to help you with that as well. And we've already given you some um, different websites, such as the Al at Purdue site, that can help you cite in MLA style. And this is the criteria that we would be grading this with to determine whether it would be incomplete or complete. And finally, the other learning assessment that you might choose to do for this week is one that's called ethical use of information. So this one actually takes the form of a scenario. We want to, you to think about how your knowledge of copyright and ethical use of information could be applied in real life. It's one thing to talk about copyright and ethical use in abstract terms, but it can be very different when we're actually presented with a problem or with a dilemma. So if you choose to do this assessment, you would write and submit a three-page double-spaced minimum response to this scenario. So you're going to pretend that you're studying in 
the library's learning commons at 3 a.m. And you see another student that you recognize as a classmate from another course you both currently are taking, but you really don't know the student very well. It looks like this student is actually using a scanner and appears to be scanning pages from a book that you recognize as the required textbook so you, that you both are taking. You purchased your own copy and you paid $200 for that print textbook. As you watch, it looks like they're scanning the textbook and saving the file on the flash drive and then they leave. We want you to think about what your thoughts would be. And again, this needs to be in a three page double spaced minimum response. If it is um, less than three pages, it would be incomplete. So really think about the details that you're going to put into this. Now, to help you with this, we've given you some links to information that you may not know actually existed. This first one is a link that gives you more information on fair use. And we talked about this in our video tutorial in terms of educational purposes. So you could apply this concept of fair use to what you think the student is doing in terms of scanning an entire book as opposed to just a portion of a book. You could also look at a policy that we've given you And this is something that you may not be aware of that actually exists. This is actually the information technology usage policy from Emporia State University. And this is something that we all are actually um, basically um, needing to adhere to, whether we're faculty or staff or you as an ESU student, if you use any type of technology, whether it's software or hardware, that's actually owned by ESU. So for example, I use a computer that's owned by Emporia State University. So I had to be very aware of anything that I do with this computer, that it is indeed privy to the restrictions that, it, that ESU would put on that because it is owned by ESU. You might want to read through this policy. Again, you could read through this policy, keeping in mind with the scenario that the student is using a scanner in the library that's owned by Emporia State University. So if you use these two links, and think about the fact too, would this be available on reserve and how would I find out? Please go ahead and cite these appropriately using APA or MLA style in your paper, but I think this will help you answer this scenario. There are no right or wrong answers to this one, kind of like with our previous um, engagement activity. It really is your own thought, but we want you to put a lot of detail and analysis into this. So definitely write a minimum of three pages double spaced. And I hope you can have a little bit of fun with this one because there's a lot of interesting things you can do with this. This again would be our rubric for grading. And we're getting close to the end of our class. It seems like the weeks are going pretty fast since we're already in week five. Um, we cannot emphasize enough again, if you have any questions, the four engagement activities or learning assessments are due. Do not hesitate to contact me or contact Megan or both of us. We can definitely help you with any questions with your engagement activities and learning assessments before those are due. After they are due, unfortunately, we are not going to be able to help you. But don't hesitate to contact us if you have any questions. And good luck with week five.